all right alrighty so in today's video i'm going to show you the entries and exits for credit spreads so i'm going to show you exactly how to enter into a credit spread and also when to exit right so basically what we want to see on the chart before we get into a credit spread so for this i'm going to be using the think or swim web platform so as you can see down here it says think or swim web so through this think or swim web platform we're going to start to construct our uh, credit spreads at the same time we're also going to look at a few charts to take a look to see you know which are the ones that you know has an opportunity for us to put on a credit spread so first off you need to have like a watch list right a watch list of a number of stocks now how many stocks you want that's totally up to you and what kind of stocks that you want to go for up to you again right i have already created you know a number of videos to share you know what i'm looking for when it terms of uh, stock selection for trading options and generally uh, when I'm trading credit spreads, especially for the bull put spread, I like to find stocks that are fundamentally strong, right? So uh, you can go through to some of my other videos on my channel where I talk about it already. So for this video, right? So the very first thing we want to go through is to the charts, right? So you want to go to the charts and of course, you want to cycle through all the different you know stocks that you have in your watch list. So for this example, uh, it's on Tesla. Right, so as you can see down here, Tesla on the right hand side, uh, the stock has actually been selling off quite a bit over the couple of last few weeks. So as you can see, the market has been selling off down here. Now, uh, the thing that I want to look out for when it comes to trading credit spreads, uh, whether I want to put on the bull put spread of or the bear call spread for individual stocks, well, one thing that you know you can use would be the stochastics, right? So for this is the slow stochastics. Now you can use the RSI if you want to as well. So basically what the stochastic does is that it tracks whether the market is in an overbought or oversold situation right so naturally if we want to get into a bull put spread we definitely want to find you know a stock where you know at least it is oversold right so if it's oversold then there is a you know a higher probability that the market can go up rather than it come down right because you know imagine the market keeps going up and then you want to put on a bull put spread right that doesn't sound too strategic right so as much as possible we want to put all the odds in our favor so the first thing that i will look at down here would be the stochastic so the stochastics as you can see it's already oversold right so if it's oversold now the next thing we want to take a look at is possible areas that we can actually sell our bull put spread right so in this case it's oversold we want to go for the bullish credit spread which is the put credit spread also known as the bull put spread. So first thing is I want to try and look for, you know, support areas. So as you can see down here, there are, you know, previously two lows, so to speak, where, you know, prices have bounced off, right? One is down here and the other one is the one right at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line across, right? So I'm going to go to the drawing tools down here, click on trend line. Then I'm going to click on this down here and then just draw a line across. So this way will give me, you know, an idea. Let me know, you know, where was the last support place, right? So as you can see, the last support place was somewhere around 205. And then the one at the bottom, we want to draw another trend line as well. So I'm going to draw this trend line as well. I'm going to stretch it across. So for this trend line, it is somewhere around 193.2. 25 somewhere around here right so right now we have two support areas so ideally what we want is to have our bull put spread below this uh, support lines right so where is it going to be is it going to be below this first one or below the second one now this really depends also on you know the option chain right what kind of a uh, uh, credit I'm able to get when I put on the uh, bull put spread but generally you know I like to put the one that is right at the bottom right I would suggest the one right at the bottom because this seems to hold generally this seems to be more of a stronger support than this one right at least because it seems like you know the market has just gone straight through down here whereas this is where the last real bounce off is so from here the next thing I will do is that I will go over to the trade tab down here. So you can see the trade tab. So the trade tab, what I want to do is I want to pull out the option chain, 
right so as you can see down here the option chain there are quite a number of dtes now i've gone through also you know why i chose certain dtes but some people you know they like to go for the uh, shorter term dtes well generally i like to go for somewhere around 45 dtes right so as you can see down here uh, there's the 43 and the 57 so i think both of them are pretty fine pretty okay now you can see the next thing i want to look at is pretty much the volatility right i want to make sure that this iv down here on the right hand side is pretty similar with each other especially you know sometimes when the exchange they release new weekly options right now as you can see down here this most likely is not newly released and how do i know that is because generally when they newly release one of those uh options right for the new dte the volatility the iv down here generally will tend to be lesser than the one surrounding it right so let's say for example the one above and below this weekly one down here is at around 50 percent right 50 51 percent so sometimes when the newly released one just comes out this could be around 40 something percent right maybe 45 percent 46 percent then in that case i might just want to avoid it because you don't want to short change yourself right if you're going to have you know lower iv it means your premium is not going to be you know that high compared to what it should be and also your deltas are going to be closer to where the current market price is that means to say if you're going to play something at 30 delta it's going to be nearer to where the market is so it's generally it kind of slightly increases the risk by a little so that is why you know i want to take a look at the iv first in this case now as for what is the iv range i'm looking for i generally do not have a preference right as long as it's not few hundred percent right because if you go for stocks like amc uh gamestop those kind of st uh, stocks where they give you know a few hundred percent i'd be very wary of that because it also means that you know the market expects a very 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 huge move right so i don't like to see something above 100 over percent right whereas for this around 50 percent even 30 percent right for example google will be 20 something percent even 30 percent and i think those are fine as well All right so for this let's just use the march 2nd one 43 days as an example right so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the put side right so we're going to click this down here click more until we have all the uh option chains uh sorry the option strikes that comes out that you know that we might want to choose so the first thing that we want to look out for is at the delta down here right so as you can see down here this delta column this is where we will decide what our short strike is right so the very first thing we want to choose is based on our short strike so how do you want to decide what is the short strike so there is no hard and fast rule as to what is the delta that you definitely want to but it also really depends you know how bullish you are on the underlying right so let's say for example if you are very very bullish then you want to go for slightly higher delta right maybe even 35 or even 40 deltas right so let's say for example you go for the 40 delta so what you want to do is you click on this and then you click on the uh, 205 so let's say for example your risk is somewhere around you know 500 dollars thereabouts right so in this case uh if we have a five point wide spread that means our risk is roughly around maybe 300 dollars in this case because the max risk is simply the width of the spread right minus off the credit that you receive so as you can see in this case the width of this spread is five points we minus off the credit which is around 1.95 now if you want to clarify and double check what exactly is the risk all you have to do is just click this review down here right so as you can see down here review it says 306 dollars right so if you have a slightly more risk right that you want to allocate to the trade then you can increase this right maybe you can go to 200 so now this is 10 point white uh, put credit spread so you can see down here the credit you receive is about three dollars 65 cents which is about 365 right less the uh uh commissions all right around 363 dollars or so now you can see the buying power effect down here is 636 so for defined risk strategies buying power effect or in this case down here the buying power effect is basically the max loss that you will experience on the trade right so this is very different compared to undefined risk strategies like the short put or even the strangle right for that i will not go into that for this video so for this you just need to know that your buying power effect is the same as your max loss right so as you can see down here we constructed one that's around 41 uh, what do you call that 41 delta now if you have this 41 delta yes you're going to have you know quite a bit of a credit as you can see three dollars 65 cents for a, for the credit is pretty good but the thing is that you're going to give up in terms of your win rate right so your win rate is going to be slightly lesser right so how do you tell what's the win rate 
So win rate, generally you can use the delta as an indication, right? So if the delta is around 40, then it just means that, you know, you take 100% minus 41%, right? So 41 is just an indication of, 41 delta is an indication that, you know, it will be, there'll be a 41% chance that this strike will be in the money at expiration, right? So this is just a very rough calculation, right? So you take 100 minus around 41, what you get is around a 60% win rate, right? Around 59%. So you get 59% win rate which is not that high now if you want to get a higher win rate then what you want to do is you want to go for slightly lower delta right so maybe you might want to go for a 30 delta so if you go for a 30 delta and let's go for 10 point wide spread right so let's say for example for this it's this 10 point wide spread that you have down here your credit you notice is two dollars 57 cents so this is about you know about a dollar or so lesser than the one at the 41 delta so this is the trade-off, right? As you can see, right? If you want to have a higher win rate, you go for a lower delta for your short put. But at the same time, if you have a lower delta, you have a higher win rate, you will have to settle for lesser premiums, right? So this is the trade-off. Now, on the other end, the very extreme one where you want very, very high win rate, right? Let's say, for example, you want 90% win rate. If you want to go for something like a 90% win rate, then you're looking at somewhere around here, right? Around 11, 9 deltas or even lesser, right? If you want to go even higher in terms of your win rate. But there is one problem down here is that your win rate, although it's going to be very high, the credit that you're going to receive is, you know, it's going to be very little, right? So as you can see down here, let's go for the 10 point wide spread again. So 175, 165, now you only have 85 cents in terms of your credit, right? The premium that you receive is about $85. By the way, if you like this video so far, please subscribe and also click the thumbs up button and also do get your free copy of the Options Income Blueprint where I share the top three options strategies that help you generate a consistent income each month trading just one to two hours a day, right? So if you want to go ahead to get this copy, just head on over to optionswithdavis.com slash blueprint. All right, back to the video. But your risk down here is pretty high, right? You can see down here, your risk is about $916. So what you have effectively done is that you have increased the win rate, but you have also, you know, changed your risk to reward ratio that, you know, in order for you to, let's say, for example, you have, one max loser right now generally if you manage it at around 21 dte right like what i always mention in a lot of my videos if you manage it around 21 dte days to expiration then the chances of you actually realizing this max loss is not very high right only if the market really you know goes all the way down way past this uh, even this long put strike that you're down here uh, 165 if it goes way below that then of course yeah you, there's there's a possibility that you're going to lose you know the max loss but other than that at 21 dte there's still going to be quite a bit of extrinsic value left so you generally won't lose all of this but one thing to take note down here is that although you have a very high win rate roughly about what 90 percent because this is around 11 delta but your win rate or rather your risk to reward ratio is about one is to ten right you make about 83 dollars and you lose about 916 dollars given that hey uh, if you do lose the max loss so this is one thing that you want to take note of do you want to always keep winning but occasionally you have one of those you know pretty big losers or do you want to have on the other end the opposite end you know, very, very high credit, right? And your risk to reward ratio is actually not so bad, right? If you take a look at this, your risk to reward ratio is about one is to two, right? Uh, you're risking about 600 plus to make about 300 plus. So your risk is two to make one. And your win rate around here would be somewhere around uh, about 60%, right? Because it's about 40 deltas, all right? So this is basically how you decide you know where you want to place your put credit spread so generally if you want something you know that is well balanced then i would suggest somewhere around 30 deltas right 30 35 deltas that would be pretty decent right so somewhere around here now the other thing that actually influences us where we're going to choose our strikes also is very dependent on you know where our support area is right so as you can see down here the support down here is around 205 
So if we construct the 200 and 191, so as you can see down here, they have already put it on the chart for us to see. We can see immediately that we have already placed the put credit spread you know, below this one down here, right? Below this 205 support area. So, you know, if the market comes down here and then it bounces back up, then that's good, right? We have profited on this uh, put credit spread. But if you want to be more conservative and you want to play it safer and you want to place it below this bottom one, then you want to look for a strike below 193.25, right? So in this case, we have to adjust it again. So we have to go back to our trade tab so let's go to our trade tab open up the option chain again and then let us go to the one that we were choosing i believe it was the march the second right so as you can see down here so it was below 193 right so below 193 we only have one that is uh uh closest is 190 right so let's try this so at 190 you notice that it's at 21 deltas so 21 deltas just mean that we have about an 80 percent win rate right 80 percent win rate let's do the 10 point wide strike and see you know what is the credit that we receive so we can receive about a dollar and 73 cents and let's take a look at our you know sort of the max risk to reward ratio by the way guys this is only the max risk to the max reward right many times you may not necessarily get the max risk like i mentioned because you're going to exit early but also you may not also necessarily get the max credit if you do not want to hold all the way to expiration so if you're planning to calculate you know like the expectancy what a lot of people like to calculate based on you know the average uh, win rate times the average uh, win minus of the average loss rate times the average loss that you incur that's the expectancy that they will give you. But you cannot use that on this uh, actual uh, probability which they give you down here because not all the time you're going to get a max loss, not all the time you're going to get a max winner, right? There'll be times where there's in between and if you were to get it out earlier, right, let's say around 21 DTE, you have a different result again. So again, you cannot calculate the expectancy just based off of whatever is given to you by default, right? So you have to actually use the results based on your trading, your trading results to actually calculate that. Now, getting back to our put credit spread down here, you can see down here is 190 to 180. And it's about 80% win rate based on this 21. And then you can see, right, you make 171 in terms of the max profit and the buying power is 8 to 8. So it's actually not too bad if you want to go with this. If you are actually okay with this, then what you want to do is just go ahead and send this uh, put credit spread trade in. Now, let's say, for example, you don't really like that it's so far away, right? Although you have a very high win rate, you're not very satisfied with this kind of uh, what they call the risk to reward ratio. So instead, what you want to do is you want to first wait for the price. Let me just go back to the chart again. So what you want to do is that you want to go back to the chart and then you want to see that this price down here actually trades a little bit lower first, right? If it trades a little bit lower, then in this case, we are able to get a, a put credit spread with a higher credit, better risk to reward ratio uh, below down here, right? So let me try and adjust the chart down here. Let me just close this off and see whether we actually get it. All right, there you go. So down here, you can see that this is already below where our support line is, which is actually good, right? But at the moment, if you're not satisfied with the credit, wait for this to go a little bit lower, then you enter into the credit spread. Because at this point of time, if you enter into the credit spread, chances are that this 20 delta over here, let me just reopen up the option chain again. It's this one down here. So as the market actually starts to go lower, this delta starts to increase as well, right? Everything starts to increase, right? That means this one may start to become in the money or at the money. So as the market goes lower, when this becomes maybe at 30 or 35 delta, then you can start to enter into the trade, right? Because we already know roughly what is the kind of risk to reward based on the 30 to 35 delta kind of a put spread, right? So if you were to reconstruct the 30 to 35 one, let's say the 35 uh, delta short strike, we know we'll be getting roughly about $3.10, right? So what we can actually do is that we can wait until this one gets down near somewhere around here, whereby this becomes around 35 delta, and then we take a look at the credit, right? If the credit is somewhere around $3 something as well, then we can enter into a trade, right? So this is for the put credit spread. Now, what about the call credit spread? So the call credit spread is simply the opposite.
So let us go back to the chart again down here. So as you can see for this down here, what I'm looking for before placing the call crash spread in this case is we want the price to actually trade up, right? We want the price to go much higher and wait until the stochastics is overbought. And then we want to see at that point of time, where exactly is the price, right? Maybe when the price goes up down here, maybe around 260, then it, this will start to show an overbought signal, right? Then at this time, this is where I'll start to pull out, you know, the trend line to try and find, you know, where is the resistance area. So as you can see, there's quite a few, right? You have a resistance area at 265, you have another one down here around 270, and another one around 280, right? So it really depends on where the market is when it's an overbought signal, right? If the market is all the way at around 271, uh, and then it shows an overbought signal, then the one we want to use is somewhere around 280, which is our resistance. So again, we want to just draw that out. So use the drawing line, right? Click on this one time and then just extend it to the other side. So for here, we can see somewhere around 278.56, right? So let's say, for example, the market has already gone up. The market has gone up and we see that, you know, it's at an overbought area. Then we want to go to our option chain again, right? At the point of time, we want to go to our option chain, go to the trade tab, same thing, open up this one and then go to the DTE that you want to choose, right? So we'll be looking at the call credit spread at this point. Now, at this point, you notice that if we were to choose the one at 280 as our short strike, it's just going to be too far away, right? It's like seven delta. But in the advance, we can somewhat already know roughly what kind of credit we will get provided, you know, in the next few days, right? Because remember the DTE, as it gets lesser and lesser, our premium will also shrink as well. So you cannot say that, you know, I'm waiting for it to get to close to 280 and maybe a week has passed. A week has passed, this DT will now go down to about 30, what, 36 days. So if 36 days, you cannot measure the kind of credit you get based on what you get right now, because right now you have about 43 days. So at that point of time, you may want to go to the next one already, right? Next one after a week later should be around 50 days. But just get a general sense of what kind of credit we can get. Let's just take a look at around the 35 to, you know, 30 delta. So in this case, we have the 33 delta one down here. So it's around 235. So provided that at the point of time, you know, when the market goes up, this 280 will be somewhere around 33 Delta. We can take a look at roughly what kind of uh, credit we can get on average, right? So maybe it's around $2.37, $2 thereabouts, right? Especially, you know, if the days to expiration left becomes lesser and lesser. Now let's talk about exit. So how do we actually exit our trade? So generally for me, if I want to exit a credit spread, I generally have a very simple rule, right? It's either at 50% take profit or 21 DTE, right? So I do not even look at the chart to see what the chart is doing, you know, just to exit my trade. But for some people, people might, you know, use technical analysis. So maybe for yourself, if you were to take a look at the chart and if you see that, let's say, for example, we are, we are looking at the uh, put credit spread, right? In this case, let's take a look at the put credit spread. So maybe if you see that the market keeps going up and it's still far away from this resistance area down here and you think that you know the market still has some room to go and there's not many days left to expiration you could maybe want to choose to hold all the way to expiration right so maybe that is what you might want to do if you use technical analysis or maybe some indicator right maybe the other way you can use is using this stochastic or the rsi to see hey if it becomes overbought then maybe that's time to get out of your uh, bull put spread because right you don't want to get into a situation whereby the market starts to come down again and erode your profits okay so that's how i would tackle exit and as you can see guys it's pretty pretty simple okay guys so i hope you like this video and have an insight as to how you can actually construct the credit spread on your trading platform by the way if you like this video then you're absolutely going to love this next video which i have for you so go ahead and watch that video right now also, if you haven't already gotten your free copy of the Options Income Blueprint, you can do so just by clicking this link down here on your screen and you'll be able to get it for free. Alright, I will see you in the next video.